I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. You know these words. What you probably don't know is the day after Dr. Martin Luther King spoke these words. On August 29th, 1963, William Sullivan, the chief of the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Domestic Intelligence Division, penned an internal memo. Personally, I believe in light of King's powerful demagogic speech, we must mark him now, if we have not done so before, as the most dangerous Negro of the future in this nation. It was the eloquence of the speech. Because he spoke out, MLK became dangerous, singled out by faceless bureaucrats. In a clandestine campaign against Dr. King, against an American citizen attempting to practice his First Amendment right to petition his government for a redress of his grievances, to peaceably assemble, to freely speak. A cabal of government agents with extraordinary discretionary power proceeded to stalk, persecute, and smear a man they viewed as an enemy to their interests. On October 10th, FBI head J. Edgar Hoover convinced the U.S. Attorney General, Robert F. Kennedy, to authorize wiretaps on MLK's phone as well as on his nonprofit Southern Christian Leadership Conference. By December 1963, Hoover went well beyond what the Kennedy administration had authorized and began installing microphones in the hotel rooms King stayed in. The FBI used illegal snooping in a vicious attempt to control MLK, to silence him by any means necessary. Does it ever make sense to give so much unchecked power and authority to government agents? Do you trust them with your emails, your calls, your texts? Will all of your personal data now scooped up by federal agencies under mass surveillance, don't you think it's time to reassert your constitutional rights, including your Fourth Amendment right to privacy? Because if they did it to MLK, do you really believe they won't do it to you?